In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to set up assets as well as our characters to physically interact with one another. All right, so we have our level and we've created this. And what we want to do now is we want to get a character in the level. We want to start moving around and we want to start interacting with the level itself. And one of the basics that we need to know about interaction is going to be physics. So with our character, let's go ahead and grab our CatFu hero character. And we're going to double click on him to bring him up in the unit editor. Now inside of the unit editor, uh, we should see him come up here. There he is. Um, you'll notice that we have three different meshes on this character. We have CatFu body, we have the left eye, and the right eye. Okay, Those are just separate meshes in this character. Now we also have this dummy 01, and if we expand this, so you'll see that it is the rig itself. So we're only worried about the meshes. Now what I want to do is I want to add a physical actor of some sort. So let's select the cat food body and let's go to create. Now you'll see that I have physics actor, and then I also have what's called a mover. Now a physics actor is going to take the entire mesh into account and it's going to create um, some sort of collision geometry around that object. So if I were to use this, you'll see that it's created a physics actor and it's using the mesh type. Normally that's not what we want to do. Uh, we could use a, um, a capsule, but you'll notice that it's taking our character's tail into account. That's not really what I'm looking for. Usually with characters, we'll use what's called a mover. So let's right click and let's delete that, um, that physics actor. Let's select CatFu body again. Let's go to Create and Mover. Now you'll see that the capsule is just around the character himself, and it has tried to size this up properly. So the height on this is 2 meters, which I'm totally fine with. The radius I want to draw down just a little bit, so let's type in 0.4 and hit Enter. Now you'll want to be careful with making your radius of your mover too small, uh, because some might say, well, I think maybe 0.3 would be a little bit better. That that seems to fit the body a little bit more. One thing that you'll want to take into account whenever you're creating your movers is the animations that are involved. So if your character begins punching or kicking um, or even running, if the animation goes outside of the mover, let's say a knee comes up here, it will go outside and it will uh, clip through enemies, it'll clip through buildings and things like that. So just just be aware of what kind of animations are going to be entailed with that. And there's nothing wrong with just having this a little bit bigger than the character. It's not going to create a huge issue. But whatever you need for your own project, that's totally up to you. Now the slope limit you can see here is set to 45 degrees. The slope limit is represented by this circle right here. And what this means is any physical objects that are underneath that will uh, go up that particular object. So let's say that we had a sidewalk and we physically collided with that and it hit that that slope limit and it was within that slope limit it would go ahead and climb up on top of that. Now if you want this to be a little bit more limited you could draw that down and make it a smaller uh, degree value but I'm okay with what it is right now. So now we have our object physically set up we could go ahead and rename this to uh, something a little bit more descriptive than mover. You could put his name underscore mover, but I think it's fine just the way it is. We're only going to be able to access this mover through the unit itself. So I'll show you what that means here in just a little bit whenever we start the scripting process. So now we have our character set up. Let's hit control S and let's move on to another asset in the scene. So let's go to Stingray and you can see here that it's asking us to save it. We could do that. We can go ahead and save it. If you don't have it saved and you made some changes in the unit editor and you click on this revert, what it will do is re it will discard anything that you changed before it was saved. So that that might help you out um, in certain s instances. So let's go to buildings and I'm going to choose alleyway um, here. Now let's double click on it and we'll just go right down the line here. So as you can see this alleyway does have a collider applied to it already and you can see that I'm using the box type for that. Also a couple of things really quickly is it's using the nodes. 
So the node that it's going to be using, or the mesh that it's wrapping itself around, is sides. So I've used it as the node, and I went to Create Physics Actor. I would have had to renamed it just to make it a little bit more clear. And then the actor template. This is very important. You need to determine what kind of actor or what kind of collisions you want this to have or behavior you want it to have. By default, um, it's probably going to be set to static. Um, this building is never going to move. I don't want it to be influenced by any other physical object. I want it to stay in place. I only want it to block certain physical pr um, objects. So leaving it as static is what we want to do. Now if you had it set to dynamic, you would want to go ahead and set up a mass for that, so a weight. In our case, we're going to leave it at zero, seeing how it's static, and then I'm going to make sure that, at, that the collider is enabled so it's working in the scene. Um, here you have your shape, so you can see the mesh that is being used, is the sides, we're going to set it up as a box type and normally you want to have collision geometry as low as possible so that way you don't have to spend so much on computing power. The material um, as you can see here is set to default and I don't have any other choices and then we have shape template. The shape is going to be a little bit different because this is kind of like a filter if you will um, because it's set to default, it will only be allowed to interact with other objects that use the same template. So if I had, um, let's say, uh, this was set to a trigger, uh, what it would do is it would detect if I've uh, collided with that um, as a trigger. Um, so we're just going to leave it as default because it doesn't have anything special. It's only supposed to block the character. All right, let's go ahead and save it. Um, I don't think I really need to do that. Let's go ahead and go back to Stingray. Let's just check a couple more of these because we may have uh, we may have some properties that we need to change. So I'm going to bring up the unit editor. That looks good. One that I do want to show you because it is a little bit more complex is the Disco. Now the Disco, you can see here, has multiple colliders on it. And I've created those specifically for the shape. So on collider underscore one, you can see that that is going to be around the pole of that canopy. So it's using Prop2, which is the name of that pole. It's probably not the best naming convention, but you get the idea. Collider underscore 2 is around this one. Collider 3 um, is around uh, the, the main building itself. And then I have this canopy in here just to kind of show you the diversity that you have available. Now for this, I don't really need that canopy, so I can actually get rid of it. I can get rid of it by right clicking on it and hitting delete. Okay. Now it's not important because the player is never ever going to come in contact with that. And so we don't want to just waste that because we could have multiple instances of this disco in the scene. And if we're wasting um, that, that could be a problem. So this looks good. Let's go ahead and hit Control S to save any changes, and there we go. So I think we have everything set up here inside of Stingray as it should be. Um, you could go ahead and do a quick check of those. We'll definitely see it if we start to test it, if the player goes through it or not, but I think we're okay. So now that that is all set up, we've learned how to set up collisions, we've set up our character, now what I want to do is I want to get in and really start to script and create that interactivity. So let's get our player moving around in our scene. We've already set up some animations, so what I want to do now is I want to map those to player controls, and we'll get started with that next.